Hello, hello, it's Pixie, how are you? Have oh, a great day. <laughs> Sounds like a bit sarcastic. No, actually, um, so what's going on today is I am doing some fasting. I did a little bit of fasting yesterday and I did have some sweetie things first thing in the morning and I didn't want any protein or anything else after that. I had this thought, well, maybe I can process sugars better without any protein mixed in, mixed in together. So I, I had, um, apart from this, probably some in chocolate. I had some chocolate and I had a sports drink. So I just, um, I use my animal abilities to see danger. And, um, so, yeah, I guess there's a few things I can talk about. It's all happening. So, I did a bit of fasting yesterday, so I had a bit of chocolate and whatever. That was, so I broke my fast breakfast. I just didn't eat anything. Then I did actually have some biscuits, a couple of biscuits, not a lot. A cup of tea, and then I didn't eat anything until uh, about six o'clock. And I had, um, I just had a couple of um, rolls, cheese and pickle rolls with some salad and some crisps. Uh, it wasn't like having eaten heavy stuff. And then today, I haven't eaten any breakfast. So I have had um, teas. I do permit myself to drink hot drinks, like um, tea and coffee, without, without any sugar, though. That's one of the things. Yeah, so I per permit myself to have hot drinks. And I haven't eaten uh, this morning. It's now nearly, nearly three o'clock, to be honest. So I might have my first meal in a while. And um, so maybe six o'clock. Yeah, so it's a good 20 hours, 20 hours fast. You get to a point where you think you could do more if you want to, but there's, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to push myself all at once. There might be a backlash from doing that. You might, I might tomorrow feel tired or find myself hard to get up or something like that. As a result of, um, not eating. So I've put in, put in the calories in a bit. And the other thing I was interested in anyway, so it's yesterday, is that you get kind of like, I had some ruminations where I had some of these thoughts come back about some person. It's like, yeah, okay, right. And I just block it. You're blocking your mind. And, no, no, don't do that. No, this is what we're going to do. That's that. You know, um, people need time to recover. And I guess I'm used to just getting what I want and just get, just get you know, getting it done and a certain compulsiveness around um, um, emotional stuff. It's a bit like empathy, it's, it's always switched on, isn't it? It's not, some people might have to switch their empathy on. So other people, they, it's on all the time. So if they see something, they're quite touched or emotionally affected by it. And so they reach out, they naturally reach out all the time. But you need to realise that's not always correct or appropriate. You know, sometimes, you like to say, I don't know in the past, I quite like to have married women actually. We're going through quite a lot of stuff going on. I was a friend and, you know, felt some sort of connection a little bit on my side. And I said, well, I've, you know, I told her how I felt. I said, I said, it's not a big issue. And it wasn't really. I knew I liked her, but I didn't. I knew she was also a bit ballsy, so she would um, say what she felt. And um, but then she's a bit flirty as well. Maybe they'll like that as well. Um, so it's about boundaries uh, in that situation. And um, anyway, so, so your ruminations and other things could pull in your head. Ruminations are your like internal dialogue, thoughts, um, you know, all sorts of things that would force you to do something. And uh, quite rightly, they are more active probably when you are fasting, because they're the ones saying, go and have a ch bit of chocolate bar, or, you know, I saw a chocolate bar earlier and I thought, cool, that looks really nice. And I looked at it and I thought, no, I don't want it. Because I let my mind evaluate it. So the logical part of the brain, said no I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have um, that at all and so it stopped it and put it back and just ignored it so you remove the object from entering your thoughts as well that's really to hide you think that you know don't be sat I mean you can if you want to punish yourself and want to sort of develop a stronger will you'd have the very things around you that you fancy a lot of things don't I mean I've got I've got a couple of wine bottles for instance and they're empty but if I had a drink in a need for drinking, I wouldn't want to see them. Um, but as it's not a problem, fitting in the front room, I, do you know what I'm looking at? I'm thinking, 
They would make great plant balls. <laughs> you can grow something now. Some great girls up in the bar, what's bar, what's bar, what's bar um, a bit cheeky of me. So I stopped it because as she stopped this jogging, she's like looking over and I didn't want to make her feel so, uh, a bit too conscious of herself. And she started playing with her phone. She didn't look really distressed or anything. I think she was curious. She was like, what's he get up to? And anyway, so I've just got myself distracted. So yeah, so you background dialogue and always other things come to the surface. Negative thoughts um, and and hunger. And I was also thinking about things like anorexia. And you know, it's it's possibly not the not eating is a problem. It's the problem not eating enough. So the, a fasting for somebody who suffers an eating disorder is better than reducing all the calories and calorie counting because calories don't actually add up really to anything anyway. They, they are a kind of estimate and they don't really cover the, how the body processes calories because we're far more complicated hormones, metabolism, age, the food you need in your body, gut chemistry, um, gut flora, all these other things that play a part in it. Mm, it's a bit of a delay here, so that's good. Extend my video. Sort me out as well. Lovely. <laughs> um, a bit crazy today. So yeah, that's that was um, that was sort of um, quite important, I think. So at the moment, so I'm going through this part, this part where I'm doing this bit of fasting, and the purpose is so I can um, look at these thoughts. And I think there might be when we eat. See, we mask things. So somebody eats because they feel bad about something. It's like bulimia where they eat a lot and they make themselves sick. Originally the eating sort of masks whatever feeling's going on. They're looking for that dopamine release and they're cheating. They're trying to make themselves sick to get round it and not put on weight because they fear if they change weight they're more noticeable or there's some psychological connection with food. But so if if they wanted to be in optimum, they want to want some help, is they eat really well, they eat whatever they like for... Um, Long, you know, I guess really for the healthiest is for the longest period of the window they can have. If you did it for five hours or so, they can binge, you can eat whatever they like. But outside of that, they do the fasting. They would wouldn't really put on what. Well, the weight would probably stay about the same, but they'd look better. People get confused when they jump on scales, is that they might be bloated. You know, it's a bit like if a woman was on a monthly, um, she might not. She may change her weight, but she might not notice any weight difference at all but she, she might feel different. That's the thing. It doesn't always add up. So basically you have to accept sometimes your brain lies to you and sometimes the science doesn't always add up as well. So if somebody says, oh, this has got so many calories, it's not going to automatically make you uh, put on weight and you don't know how many calories you've got in your system or you're currently burning and storing and everything. So, um, so the fasting is an option However, you know, I'm not advising people, I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not anything like that. I don't know what your disorder is, I don't know what your mental health is, etc. And there's other things as well about the gut, the gut, how the gut intelligence works. I was also looking at things that foods might be affecting people's brains. When you look at people that young, like young people that commit suicide, has anyone looked at what they might be eating? They may be eating an adequate diet. Their brains are growing, their, their brain chemistry is out. They're not getting the, the right melatonin and serotonin levels in their brain. That's triggering. That's triggering more darker thoughts, and um, so so uh, fasting is not just a detox of the body. It can detox emotionally, and the stomach is a. They're talking about that as a brain as well. So there's a lot more deeper stuff, dealing with your problems, um, dealing with your ruminations. But you've got to be in a strong enough sense of mindset. So a bit like when somebody goes through, you know, let's say the partner died or something. It happened and they start um, comfort eating. That so should be only a temporary measure. It's a bit like, you know, taking things to deal with um, stress or depression or something. Ideally, you want it in the short term, not the long term. And if it is a long term thing, maybe you just look at the, the bigger overall picture, like, you know, should you grow lavender or something and, and have it indoors, or things that may affect your mood, may affect um, how you feel. So the plants could be a way forward. 
and um, it leads me on to my next thing. I've got some plants I'm growing, I've got some California poppies, they're growing. Um, I've got some elephant creeper or it's a Hawaiian baby wood rose, so I'm trying to do, do that, but I don't know if the temperature's quite right for it. I'll get my Datoras growing again, because my spider mites are gone, basically I removed all their food source, so they eventually died off, they must need some, they're not like um, fleas that can go and hide in forever, they want fresh plants, and so without a food source they're kind of diminished, however they do return in my flat, and they, they must be able to live in the soil or do something really weird. Um, I've got some other thing, I've got some Calate Zananachi or something, it's um, it's it mispronounced, I just sort of drag it out of my head, Zanachi, yeah, it's um, it's um, like a Mexican type um, dream herb, so that's I've got that going on, I've got some African dream herbs, with little flowers, that's that's starting to grow, I think, some of them. I mixed them in with the poppy, so it's a little bit confusing what's popping out there. And, um... What else have I got? Yeah, so there's, um... Um, some cat I'm trying to go, get, um... Kaffee and Doulis. So originally I ordered some off eBay, and the bloke sent me a different plant. He sent me this Mexican one. So when I saw it, I saw this Kalis, um... Zananchi or something, um, Zanenchi, and I watched the video actually, it's quite funny, this guy was drinking it, he says tea, it tasted absolutely foul, and it's quite funny watching him being sort of um, coughing up on that stuff. Um, yeah, so it's, it's sort of quite interesting. So now I'm next to the university area, I'm not too far away from where somebody was actually recently was found dead in the lake, so that's a mystery. Um, not too sure if it was a suicide, a misadventure, sort of drowned in it. But the lake's probably not that deep. I can't imagine someone just falls in it and drowns. He might have fainted in it. Or if there's something in the more of the paranormal realm, something um, knocked him out and drowned him or did something to him. It's not... It's not impossible because there's lots of cases where people just find them dead next to water or in water, but they, that wasn't the cause of their death. So they think, well, why would he do that, or there's other things where people strip off and um, found dead next to water, and that's pretty bizarre as well. So yeah, it was different cases, like a skeleton found next to some river, some was living in the country, was living, living feral actually, a human was living feral somewhere in big Wales, it was this case I looked at. Um, they couldn't identify the, um, the person, because it was just a skeleton there. It's kind of a, a person there with clothes, but it said it appeared that the person had been living living rough for a while. So maybe somebody had come out of the army or something couldn't couldn't cope with living in the house, or he's just homeless. So that was um, interesting. So things. Um, trying to think of anything else. I can dig out. So I'll see how these plants go. I might look at some tinctures. I might look at selling the leaves. There's all these options. I could mix it up something. I've got my. Um, I've got my, my tonic, and I can add it to the tonic as well. But I have to be careful, you only take a little bit of it, it because I can't tell the strength, especially if it's got Datura in it. You know, I take a swig of it and um, and um, start floating out of reality. So that's the other thing. So really it's working on the new me, so I've got some things going on. And I've realised when you start detoxing yourself, like I want to do some housework. That was interesting. I thought, oh yeah, I thought, don't be lazy. You feel, feel more organised. I think it's because dealing with that part, yeah, there's something else we talk about. Dealing with that part of your, your brain makes you um, more determined and more will driven. So that it's good for um, getting yourself back into focus. And um, I'm going to touch on people if they have breakdowns and go into schizophrenia or they've got prone to schizophrenia. Some of it is to do with the, the ruminations in their mind anyway and that circuitry, because they're using it quite a bit, has become more more active and then when they've had a breakdown they, they, their willpower's gone, this is sort of taken over, this neural network that you've been using as, as basically a system. Um, so I'm having this thing with my dad's mental health and, and um, 
and basically trying to deal with his problems and that he can't identify his own faults from external forces. So you know, I believe you know some spirits are um, telling him to do things, or they they don't want him to do things, or they're reinforcing OCD behaviour, and um, and basically just just the only way to do it is to tackle it logically. Like if he said you're going to die tonight or something, and it's tomorrow, so well, if you did die yesterday, why would you die today? It's um, once they've lied, that should be enough proof that they're not, they're not really a, a real issue. Um, it doesn't work that obviously. It's um, it's a reinforced um, mental state, and um, I think some of the to heal from something like that, it's about getting your own willpower back, and offsetting the ruminations. So it needs a lot of psychotherapy. But if you just shut them down with drugs, it doesn't necessarily help you de develop more independence. It's a bit like, I think, when my dad had a some type of breakdown, he lost the confidence to drive. And um, he didn't drive for about five years, and he felt better in himself that he started to drive again. Um, he just lost that confidence. So when he's taking medication, once they've identified the nature of his illness, then they put that in place. And then there's other issues like his um, identity and his psyche are, are interfused with his belief systems. And um, it makes it a lot more difficult to manage. So you have to look at productive thoughts, unproductive ones, you know, put on a whiteboard. I may have mentioned this before, I don't know. Or thoughts that don't really, they're not good thoughts to have. And so if they're harmful, or whatever, you just need to list them, separate them, and then say, well, you don't do this, you can do that. You know, it's just like uh, meditating or um, spiritual beliefs is not a problem. Um, if you if you felt you had to do something to appease something you hated, then it wouldn't be very good. Or do something that you just, you know, like you have to keep getting up and down or going to sleep at certain times or odd behaviour. I have to look at that. Can that be managed? Does that is that really a something you really want to identify yourself? Is that you're under suppression from your uh, from your mind? Um, so yeah, it's interesting. But I think that's definitely the root of it. And um, like with the problem is the more you use something, the more active it becomes. Uh, also, equally, the reverse can happen. The less you use it, the more. Um, Where's this white car going? There's a problem, I don't know where you're going. Oh no, you changed the with this. It's quite difficult when cars don't indicate to the last minute what they want to do. I know they're observing traffic, looking for the best options, but it's not always the way. Oh, is it? There's lots of children coming out. Um, so there was, I'm sure there was something else I wanted to talk about. It's just, it's, it's um, come out of my mind now, so. The plants is cool, um, the fasting, I'll see how that goes, see if, if um, you know, when you get hungry and moody and stuff, is that down to the food doing it, or is it the case of because the food's not there, these emotional side kicks in and, and they're brought to the surface. I think when you're grumpy and moody and you don't have anything to, to play on your mind, then you're probably at your healthiest state then. It's a bit like when I went to meditation, my mind was thinking about plants and stuff, and other people were saying, well, I'm having a very active brain, it's a lot of chatter in the background, so I thought, well, that's good. At least that's that part of my mind um, settled down, so I'm not um, think, overthinking things. The brain chemistry is back where it needs to be. And also, most men work to strategy, so you, you know, sort your strategy out, whatever that might be. And uh, mental health indicators, that would be interesting. See, so if you haven't been happy for a while, then you'll find ways to raise that bar. Get yourself back to where you want the headspace you want to be. Do the things you're into. And other indicators, like I start growing more plants. I'm looking at crystals. Um, I'm doing research into um, different things on the internet. I haven't really looked too much into... Um, well, the thing is with things like aliens and stuff like that, at the moment it seems to be fairly quiet. Oh, 
kids just right in the middle of the road. I don't know why they think that's, that's actually a smart thing to do. I mean, they are a vehicle, no, no problem there. Not that they're going down a country lane. Well, I think it's the um, narcissism. Remember I mentioned about the brain chemistry changing and things like that. So it's self-identity grows a lot bigger. Uh, and um, so, yeah, sort of <laughs> going over other things I've already gone about before. And, and, um, but we're all the same, really. Like I mentioned, ruminations we've got. At points in your life, you can act like you're schizophrenic. If you're under enough stress and you get a lot of paranoid thoughts coming in, and you're acting upon them, you might think you know what the other person thinks, and all that sort of stuff. That's all in that territory. And if that's any difference is they're more extreme. We all have things where we might say, well, I don't really want to eat too much. I don't want to get fat. Or, you know, we all have this... this uh, we've got self-image, basically. That's, that's a different... That's the um, social image, self-image, um, you know, how you see yourself, like, I see myself younger than I am, um, I don't really feel uh, my age, I don't know what that is, I just, I feel the things in your body, physical age though, you can do, like, I can't do it with my back, I my back and things become more aware of, um, and then um, development of spirituality through plants, this is sort of the things I've covered today. Which I think once they're grown, there's no point showing you seedlings that are not really doing much. Especially if we can get the um, the Hawaiian baby wood rose. I don't know if you like growing inside my flat. It'd be quite mad. But at least that'd be that'd be quite good because it's more difficult to grow. Some of these plants, you plant them in the ground, you plant them in your pot and so on. You're just waiting for it to happen. Nothing happens. So yeah. Anyway, just big sign off uh, for a great day and speak to you soon.